Do you ever feel the perfect homes on TV or social media make your own space feel lacking or even a little depressing? What if the key to loving your home is not about how it looks, but how it makes you feel? This video isn't about expensive makeovers or trendy decor. It's about a mindset shift that can transform your space from a source of stress to a haven of happiness. We'll explore practical ways on how to ditch the comparison trap and create a home that truly reflects your family's needs and values. Hi friends, I'm Simply Sherry. I empower busy working moms just like you to flourish so you can create a home you love. So how do you create a home that you love? Number one, embrace your uniqueness hug it, take it all in. You are you, there's no one like you. And I know we've heard that before, but honestly, it's true, right? You have to believe it. So there are Instagram pages we follow, YouTube channels, even documentaries or reality TV on uh, the streaming uh, platforms, or you see it in a magazine. And yeah, those are things that maybe we inspire us or we aspire to, but ultimately it's not there for you to copy. Why would you copy someone else when you are so unique? Even with this channel, I mean, I don't know anyone who would want to copy my house because as far as how it looks, you know, I feel like it's, it's me, it's us. I have a whole wall that is all magnets and I, I haven't shown that yet, but I should show that one time. I have a whole wall just magnets from places I've traveled to. That makes me so happy. And I have it in a place where I pass by every single day because it reminds me that all the things that I do is because I always I want to get to the point where I can travel all the time. And it also celebrates the places that I have been. It brings up memories. I've taken my family, I've taken my son, my daughter. We've We've just done so many trips. Not enough in my opinion. I'd love to travel more, but it's, uh, it helps me embrace those memories. So it's embracing my uniqueness. And not that I'm unique, that I'm the only one in the world who likes to travel, but the way I've traveled, where I've traveled, the memories, those are unique to me. So you have got to ditch those perfect pages in that magazine. You know, sometimes you're flipping through it in the doctor's office or while you're in line at the cashier or, you know, a YouTube video pops up and Amen to those women who have beautiful homes and it's so perfectly decorated for them. You know, it looks nice. It looks nice on TV. It looks nice on your mobile phone, but that doesn't have to be you. Think of your home as a blank canvas and how you want to live in it, how you want to feel when you're in that space. How do you want to feel when you're in your living room? Do you want it to be formal? Do you want it to be casual? Do you want it to be a game room? Do you want a big ping pong table in the middle of it? Because that is what you and your family love to do. Well, for me, I like my uh, entryway living room and dining room. I've shown a video of that. You can check that out. And I like it where it's it's inviting. It's uh, People can come in and they can sit down. So I'm not gonna have a ping pong table, although I like to play ping pong. I'm not gonna have a movie theater, theater in there, but I have it because I like to entertain. I like to have 20, 30, 60, two people over. And so that is my space to welcome people in, usher them into our home and, to in, and into hopefully a, a good conversations and great memories. So if you guys like uh, movie nights, why this is what we did we have a second room or we have a second space here in my bedroom and you would think why would you put a movie theater in a bedroom well when the pandemic happened we were just watching movies and i haven't stopped but anyway i said uh let's move the tv over here and i'm gonna get some reclining chairs thank goodness for you know amazon they just deliver it during the pandemic and uh had uh, put a little beverage cooler in there. I have a place for snacks and it's wonderful. It's what my family likes, you know, but somebody else, you know, they would never put a TV in their bedroom. But for me, I do. Or maybe you're a board game family and you want a whole room just dedicated and celebrating 
board games. We'll make that happen. You can do it. There's lots of ideas that uh, you can comb the internet and uh, do that for your space. For me, yes, we love board games, but it's not all the time. So I have all our board games in a storage ottoman in our family room, and I actually have a folding game table that we keep in um, the side of the house. It's covered. It used to be in the garage, but it's in the side of the house. So when we do board game night, we bring that up, set it up. It probably takes less than 10 minutes. We have it there in the family room, put the TV on, and we play our board game. Don't be afraid to let your quirks and your passions shine through. Now, of course, for me, if you know I have five different hobbies and passions, well, maybe I don't want it all on display. Maybe you do, and it is what it is, right? And um, maybe to others, it looks cluttered, but for you, it makes you happy. So go with it. So maybe you have a child who loves dinosaurs. So instead of putting the dinosaurs in a toy box, and that's you know labeled dinosaurs or has a picture of dinosaurs on it, and he can only take it out when it's playtime. Why don't you have a dinosaur display shelf where all his wonderful dinosaurs are displayed in his room or in the toy room or wherever, whatever space you or wall that you want to designate. So think about uh, themed nooks. Is it a, a reading nook where you have your comfy chair or your kid's comfy chair and a bookshelf next to it and a place to put your favorite coaster and your cup of tea? Or is it you um, have uh, vintage albums and you used to like to play music, uh, guitar a lot. So display your guitar, put your vintage albums there with your record player, you know, enjoy, enjoy what you like. Or just like my magnet wall, maybe you have a wall that is your memory lane wall, whether it's travels or family photos, uh, kids through the years, places you've been to, um, even your dream board. Your dream board can be up there because it's you living in your space. So for me, even when I have parties, like that magnet wall is, you know, that was, I put that there for me. And, you know, do people get entertained by it when they come over? Actually, they do. And it, it honestly wasn't for them. It was for me. But once in a while, they, they'll bring up, they're looking at the magnet and they're like, oh, you've been to Prague. Oh yeah, I've been there too. Or, oh yeah, I've always wanted to go to Prague. So those types of conversations come up and they get a little bit of a you know window into the things that you like, but ultimately it's for you to enjoy. Okay, number two, functionality over fantasy. Yes, I mean, this concept of fantasy self, you know, it's been out there for a while. So my fantasy self loves to look at Architectural Digest. I mean, that's one of my favorite magazines. I don't sub to it. I just like to flip through it once in a while when I see it. You know, you can always go to the bookstore and look at your newest magazine. So that's, uh, that's a little hack for you. I mean, maybe it's not a hack, but it's something you could do so you don't have to have a house full of magazines. But listen, if you like a house full of magazines, go ahead. Um, by the way, someone had told me when they were decluttering, uh, their grandfather's house, he had junk removal, they had junk removal take 2,500 pounds. That's like a ton, right? Of magazines from the home. That's how many magazines he had. Ho hopefully it, it made him happy, especially like with Architectural Digest. I love the magazine and I am just like, I always, there's never a spread that I don't like. Uh, every home looks amazing. But in reality, you know, let's say there's a room like they have a library room. Oh gosh, that that's like actually a, fan, a fantasy. If I could have a library room, just a room that I can close off that's just all for books, I would absolutely love that, okay? And at times I thought, which room would I dedicate to a library? But in all honesty, I like that, but the functionality, I would rather have the room open for, you know, when, uh, for guests, for people to come over, you know, I would have to, let's say, take away the dining room or the living room or one other room. And I don't have the, the space for that because I would rather have the guest room. I would rather have the dining room and the living room. That's how we function. I would rather have the family room. So think about your family. How do you actually function? Example, game night. Do you actually function, like for us, we take the games out of the ottoman, 
We bring the table, unfold it less than 10 minutes. But how does your family function? If you always have a game table in the middle of your family room, does it get used? It is a, is it a place that can, that doubles for, that can double for a homework station or where you, you, um, take care of bills. Maybe you don't have a little desk for a home office and maybe that's where you can take care of your bills. So functionally that works. And if you're okay with the table out or changing out the center table or the coffee table for actual game table, then that will work for you. But if there's a game table there and it's you're actually always bumping into it and you only use it once or twice a year, once or twice a month, then maybe it's something that doesn't really function for you. Is that also where your kids play? So do you have cubbies for storage? Do you have adequate amount? Do you have an adequate amount of storage bins or baskets for them to put away their toys because you don't want to keep tripping over them? Well, that's where, you know, the you want that's where you think of the function. Yes, we want this as the play space. But no, we don't want toys all over. So then you find storage solutions for those toys, but you keep them in the family room. What about your kitchen? Maybe you have a small kitchen and you have to really choose the appliances that are going to fit in there. Uh, are there appliances that you haven't used for three months, six months, or maybe you, you use it just once a year and those appliances or those platters, plates, what serving utensils, they can be stored somewhere else, maybe under the bed, in an attic, in the garage, depending on how often you use it and how willing you are to go to that section of your home and pull it out and set it up. And functionality doesn't have to be boring, okay? It doesn't have to be a plastic bin, but if you love plastic plastic bins, go for it. It could be a pretty basket. It could be under uh, the bed storage, so you, it's out of sight, and that's how you like it to not look. So as I mentioned, hidden storage, uh, storage ottomans, storage ottomans, are I think one of the most practical, budget-friendly, multi-use things that you can have. It serves as a table and it stores. And I have actually a storage ottoman that's like a drum on the side of my uh, couch in the family room. That's where we put the blankets. Instead of displaying them, you know, wrapping, putting them, draping them over the arm or whatever on the couch, I just decided that's just going to be put into the storage side table. Other thing you can use is multi-purpose furniture. I think one of the best pieces of furniture that is a multi-purpose furniture are those couches that turn into sleeper so that are sleeper sofas and then they have storage in them also. So you can have storage for board games, blankets, pillows, and then when it's sleepover time for your kids, that can be made into a bed and they don't have to necessarily be in their room. It's, it's fun, you know, it's totally fun when they sleep in another room that's not their bedroom with their friend or friends. I think one of the most functional things you can do in your house is have a landing zone. So I'm gonna be making a separate video about the landing zone. You could call it the launch pad, command center. I like to call it either uh, any of those three things, not, ne not necessarily a drop zone because it's not just dropping stuff, but it's really, uh, a mindset thing on how you put together your landing zone, but I have a um, free PDF that you can actually check out uh, in the link below, and I explain it a little bit at the end of the video. I love a good landing zone. You know, when you come home after a long day at work, you picked up the kids from after school care, you're all tired and hungry, now it's time for homework, dinner, and it's just a great place to kind of decompress Put stuff where they belong. Make sure you you know you know where the homework is or things you need to sign. You're not missing it the next day. You know your keys. You know your purse where they are. And so when you're ready to leave the next morning, you can you know you can go to exactly where you need to go to get those items. And so I'll be explaining that a little bit more in my mini course, which will be uh, launching in a few weeks. Number three, memories over moments. So create that lasting memory or those experiences and not just snapshots. Of course, we love to follow, um, let's say the families with those beautiful Instagram pages, right? Or even their YouTube vlogs. And it's nice to see that, you know, it's, it's great. It's, it's uh, wonderful. I love that there's wonderful families out there, okay? 
but for your own family, one snapshot, making something look all, you know, nice and decked out. Yeah, it looks great for the picture, but you dig deeper what you really want. Why we like the snapshots is because we connect it to, oh, wow, what a great experience. What a great family. Oh, that's a lovely home. They must have fun. They must have laughter. They must have good meals. Okay, well, you don't ultimately know that. What you do know is your own home. That snapshot is just the top, you know, you know, like the the iceberg, right? This is the top of the iceberg. Okay, that's that's what you see. But really dig down deep and you see like, hey, what I really want to create are those experiences, is the connection where, let's say your kitchen nook, you know, is it a place that fosters conversation? Or do they go there and it's piled with mail and homework and this, you know, laundry maybe, <laughs> uh, stuff that should be in other places of the home. It wasn't put away. Is it just like a drop zone or a magnet surface? So how will that foster conversation? Who will feel relaxed in that environment? Okay, I know for me, I wouldn't. That's why my kitchen table, it has the bowl for the fruit, the napkins, the salt and pepper. Okay. And I had shown it before where there's a bench there and my husband puts all his books. And so I had to be okay with that, that that's organized enough, but it is a space that fosters conversation. That's even why we got a bench versus six chairs. So we have four chairs and a bench because we thought, okay, there'll be some days where my daughter will have friends over and maybe there's four of them total. So they can all sit in the bench and it, it's been great. We've had great dinners and people over where we've had seven, eight people around that table when normally it's supposed to be for six. Maybe you guys are movie buffs or you just love movies. So having, let's say a cozy movie zone or a movie movie buff zone in your home where you have the reclining seats or you have movie posters. And of course you have to have, no, it's up to you, have that box with the movie candy and when it's movie night, that's the only time they can get the candy. I mean, it's so much fun having popcorn or, you know, whether it's the microwave popcorn and packets so they get to pick the popcorn or they get to pick the Raisinets or whatever, your Twizzlers, right? Those are great movie candies. I mean, make it fun for your family because it's, it's not about remembering what happened in the movies or what movies you found, okay? Or what movies you, you watched, although there's apps for that. But it's the experience of, yeah, Friday nights were movie nights. And it was just relaxing and fun. And we could talk about the movie after. It's pretty cool. Number four, beyond the aesthetic. So we've been kind of talking about this, but I want to emphasize, you know, it's not about the magazine or Instagram worthy uh, pieces of furniture or the way a room looks, but it how it, it makes you feel. So do you want a leather sofa? that is upright, but when it's movie night, it's totally uncomfortable? Or do you want the, that big sofa or the, the futon that serves a multi-purpose where you could throw a bunch of pillows on it, relax on there, and then maybe it's also serves, double serves as a place for guests to sleep. Or maybe you want a beanbag chair. Another thing with um, going beyond the aesthetic is maybe you're really into sustainability and repurposing furniture. So you find something at the thrift store or the side of the road and you repurpose it, paint it, uh, dresser now becomes maybe that, um, um, the drawers in the corner that you put your candy box in. Nesting tables are also great in a place like a family room because maybe there's three tables that go under each other, right? But now when it's time for movie night, each of you, Three people can have their own table where they could put their drinks and their popcorn or their snacks or whatever you're eating during the movie. Number five, comparison is the thief of joy. Now, I have had thieves steal my purse, steal my bonus check in my purse two separate times. Okay. One was just my purse and everything in it. Two was they just got the bonus check that was in my purse. They must have been following me. We've had people break into our home and stolen our computer. I mean, it was, it's pretty scary. Uh, there's one that they tried to steal our car and we've even had someone we thought was a friend 
steal our video camera and a few other things. It is absolutely true that thieves take away joy. Not only do they take away the item, but they take your joy away. But you know, eventually you recover, but you don't always recover the items. Like us, we never recovered those items. So how do you combat comparison? Well, write a gratitude list. It can be in your mind. You could write it out. You can journal. You could put it on a post-it note and put it on your mirror so you could see it every morning for the week. So what are things that you're grateful for? Listen, I'm grateful for um, how hard my husband works, you know, how much he's really put it on himself to take care of our family, right? So no matter where we've lived, I've always felt secure. So it wasn't about what type of housing we lived in, but it's how he made me feel, how he makes me feel safe. We have lived in 15 different homes total, okay? 14 of those homes, no, 13, no, let's say, I think 16 homes total. So 14 of those homes were in the first 10 years of our marriage, okay? <laughs> That's a lot of moving. Uh, then we lived in another, our first home for a year. And then we've lived in this home over 15 years. I'm also grateful for the location of our home, that it was walking distance to our grade school, my kids' grade school. So it was great because when they were young at that age, we would walk together. Let's say it's just a seven minute walk. It allowed us to connect in the morning. So every weekday morning, we connect. Hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling this day? Did you have a good sleep? Oh, you have this today. How are you feeling about it? And then when they come home from school, I pick them up and then we can reconnect then. Where, hey, how was school? Oh, what'd you do today? You know, and then they can share. It was just a great time. Um, it's just, it was just, it was great for me because I felt like I could connect with them every morning and every afternoon, aside from the other things that we did. And how else can you combat the comparison trap? Well, celebrate your stories. Make sure what you have in your home are things that you love, things that bring you joy, things that help you uh, remember things that were good for you. And then also curate your social media feed. Okay, so if there are uh, accounts you follow and they just, after a while, you just, you start to feel the envy or the comparison or the FOMO or, you know, just stop looking at them or put them on pause, put them on snooze for a while. It's, it's not about them. It's just, it's how you receive it and how you process that. Right. But if there are accounts like, Oh, you know, like for me, I follow travel accounts and most of the time I never get envious because I'm just like, yes, bucket list, bucket list, bucket list. But other times, like if I'm following a, a home channel or even another organization channel, it's hard for me because sometimes I think, oh, I got to do that. I got to do that. Oh, I'm not doing this. And I just feel like I always lack and I'm not doing enough. And so those type of accounts, I necessarily don't follow. Uh, I may check them out once in a while and just, you know, see, okay, get some ideas but it's not something that I look at every day because it doesn't help me. And that's how I'm, that's, that's who I am. That's how I'm built. And so I purposely follow or watch things that move me forward in my life instead of keeping me trapped here in the comparison trap. All right. So there's just remember, there's no one size fits all for a happy home. Focus on what matters to you. Create a space that fosters connections prioritize experiences over aesthetics, think about your unique story and celebrate that. Your home should reflect you and your family and not somebody else's vision. Creating a home you love is a journey, not a destination. Enjoy the process, celebrate the small victories, be creative. The most important things is that your home feels welcoming comfortable and full of love. Subscribe for more home mind shifting tips. Make sure to check out the description below for the link to the free PDF about how to create a landing zone in four easy steps. Share in the comments below how you make your home feel special. I can't wait to see how you create a home that you love and see you next time. Bye. Are you tired of the daily scramble to find your keys, purse, work projects, backpacks, homework, and permission slips? Reclaim your sanity with these exclusive tips for setting up a stress-free landing zone. 
These strategies are for busy working moms just like you to save time and restore peace to your home. Enter your email and you'll receive a one page PDF with four easy steps on how to set up a landing zone to save time. Create a home you love.